Hello, my friends, and welcome to Kurt Berglund's Baseball World. Every once in a while, a brand new product comes out that I think is kind of exciting, kind of worth taking a new look at. And we have one of these on my tabletop today, and I want to give you a first look did an unboxing of this product just a few days ago. I have, since that time, studied up, watched some videos, and played a couple of games, and I've got some impressions to give you about this product um, that uh, I am excited about. It's called On Deck Baseball Pro. This is the box that it comes in. If you missed my unboxing video, thick cardboard box. The uh, box itself, you know, usually when you get boxes for Sims, they're large, like eight and a half by 11. This is not, this is really, dare I say, travel friendly. Um, and, uh, kind of an exciting product and I want to show you why who I think it is a good fit for and who it might not be a good fit for the price this is the starter set for on deck baseball pro now on deck baseball of course is a product that's been around for a while it has um, uh, started I believe as purely a fictional uh, player sim uh, but since that time it has expanded to um, slowly bringing in some all-time great of players uh, real-life players from Major League Baseball and uh, the Negro Leagues um, and this set is the first foray that I'm aware of, the first full-fledged effort to bring in 100% Major League players. With this starter set, um, you get the directions for the game. You get two D10 dice, which you need to play. Uh, the booklet is also a smaller size. Uh, I believe it's about 30 pages in length. Um, and you get your charts that you need to do the game, although the vast majority of what you're talking about with at least this iteration of On Deck Baseball is on the player cards. Uh, there are pitcher hitting cards, and then there are some individual um, play cards uh, charts. There are several of them, but they are not regularly used. For the most part, when you're doing on-deck baseball, you're using the player uh, cards, uh, both sides of, of a page for the batter and for the hitter. With the starter set, you get the 75 Red Sox excuse me, and Reds, you get the 39 Yankees, the 85 Cardinals, the 69 New York Mets, and what's the other one? The 79 Pittsburgh Pirates. So there's six teams in the pro starter set. There are no uh, full seasons available in the pro version. So in other words, you can't buy the 19... 79 season set uh, in there are some expansions for the pro version of the game i'm going to put the link for on deck baseball in the description for this video along with um, my email in case you want to communicate with me about questions you might have uh, about what i'm seeing or what i'm talking about in this video i may not be clear it's a brand new thing and i'm certainly not an expert at this point there are some videos on youtube that describe that the on deck folks have created uh there are some other folks that have tried on deck and made some videos as well 
all of those, I think I've seen every one of them now and trying to learn the game and I'm feeling more confident about it. So let's take a look at how, that the basics of how gameplay works. Now there's three versions that you could do for on deck baseball. And the other thing of course, is that you can create your own hybrid uh, version. You wanna like mix and match from the three versions from basic to I guess intermediate to advanced or pro is what it's is the middle version. Um, and then the all star is the soup is like the super advanced version of it. Uh, so let's take a look at how a an at bat would work and why I think this is kind of a unique product that's worth taking a look at, especially for some folks. We're going to come back to that in just a few minutes. All right, so what I have here in front of you is a batter pitcher matchup. This is Joe Morgan from the 75 Cincinnati Reds and Joaquin Andujar from the 85 Cardinals. Now, if you're doing the basic game, this is where the confrontation starts. And this is these are the only numbers you need to look at to get things started. So you have... Uh, and a hard a minus four Morgan at a plus at a regular four positive four. If you're doing the pro or all star versions, then these are your splits. So Andahar is a right handed pitcher, and this would be Morgan's number against the right handed pitcher would be a five. Andahar's number against Morgan as a left handed batter would be minus three. So your your subtraction there would get you to a positive two. Now that's important because you're going to roll a die and that die is going to tell you you're going to add that number or subtract it in the case of a negative number situation and then you're going to know which card to look at. If the result of your adding and subtracting leaves you with five or less, you're going to the pitcher card if it's six or more, you're going to the batter card. So let's try it out and see. A nine. So we have Andahar as a right-handed pitcher. That's Morgan at a five. Morgan as a left-handed batter. That's Andahar as a negative three. Five minus three is two. We take two and we add that to nine and we get 11. That's way over what we need, uh, six or better, to land on Morgan's card. All right, let's do another one. Got a seven. That's uh, Andar at a minus three, Morgan at a positive two. The seven makes two plus seven makes nine. That's still on Morgan's card. And one more time, a six. And you can see that when you get your positives, when you get the positive area here, it's going to get pretty tough to not land on that batter card. So let's do it. Um, we turn this over and we look at the batting matrix. So let's zoom in a little bit on that batting matrix, uh, right now. And here we go. So what you see is a grid and we're looking at this right now. We're going to roll our two dice and we're gonna land on the grid. It's a seven for the red column and a nine for the blue row. So we're seven and we're nine, and that is a single plus, one B plus. So what does that allow us to do? Well, first of all, you can see that the matrix is color coded. So what that's going to tell you is that um, all of your all of your base hits for singles are green, your doubles are sort of yellow, your triple is gold, and the home run is orange. Now, um, that plus tells us that you can take an extra base with your base runners if you want to. So that's the plus part of it. 
Your walks here are in purple and then your outs all have their own individual colors as well. Now a single, it goes to the outfield. You might say, well, where does that go? If you're, how do you know what, where, what fielder is going to be involved in the play? If you've got a runner on first, you roll a single plus, what happens? Well, you're going to roll again a D10, and you're going to look on the F chart, which is the fly ball chart. That tells you, it gives you a nine, and that tells you the, the single was to right field. And if you've got base runners that are going to try an extra base, you're using the right fielder's data throwing arm. The matrix, this is Joe Morgan's individualized matrix. So this is not something that's generic for every batter. Um, I'll give you another example here. I'm putting Joe Morgan's matrix next to the 1975 Johnny Bench matrix. Uh, so this is Bench, this is Morgan. So what this tells you, uh, you can see that Bench obviously struck out a lot more than Morgan did, but Bench also hit for more power than Joe did. So these are customized for each batter, but um the out charts are also customized so if you if we put the out charts next to each other here's bench's outs here's morgan's outs you can see that they are different as well um and if we look at the pitchers their backside looks the same way uh so, well it looks similar i guess their matrix, their matrices are customized as well. I just grabbed the 1969 Nolan Ryan and to try and put this next to Andahar. So here's Ryan with all his strikeouts. Here's Andahar. And you can see very clearly that these are customized for pitcher results as well. So what you're doing with your batter pitcher matchup, and let's come back here to a little wider view. Um, you start with your splits for who gets the advantage, whose matrix is going to be used. And then you go to that customized matrix on the back to see the result of the play. Now, there may be a whole lot of other things involved. If we go back to the front side, you can see that there are base running ratings. This is for on-base instincts or for things like being doubled up on a line drive and so on. A jump would be to, obviously, get a jump on a stolen base attempt. And this is base running speed. Uh, this is the sort of comparable part for the pitcher side. Stamina being sort of the base number of innings that he can go, but you can be adding to that or subtracting from it as the game goes along. There's a grid on the back here, the fatigue chart, that could subtract from, or it could leave him alone, uh, depending upon what you roll as he goes along in the game. Or it could add it could add stamina innings to it as well. There are defensive ratings. There's arm ratings, and as I mentioned before, there are pitcher hitting cards. You get uh, basic stats at the bottom. <coughs> Excuse me, and every player is rated uh, for the positions that they played. Morgan here is rated for second base and the outfield um so it if the if the player is rated at more than one is i'm sorry if the player played more than one position um then he's rated for those typically their primary position is given their best defensive rating that's the bare bones that's the basic structure of on deck now there's a whole lot more to it there are 
ways to make errors. There are ways to do fielding checks. You can do all the strategy. You can bunt. You can uh, uh, go for extra bases based on uh, and, and sort of do an interaction with outfielder play. Um, you can get home runs off of the pitcher card as well as off the batter card. There's a whole lot of layers to it, but this is where it starts. And on the back of these charts, of these cards, um, you get the charts that you're going to be referring to. I'm going to say 90% of the time, you're going to be resolving your plays right here. So these are oversized pages, and they might be bigger than you're used to, but they're also containing all of the information that you need for the most part to uh, successfully play a game of On Deck Baseball Pro. All right, so let's talk about my first impressions. As I said a few minutes ago, On Deck Baseball started out as this fictional world, baseball world, uh, and there are several seasons of teams of cards that are able to be purchased on the website. On Deck Baseball Pro is sort of a new pathway that the creators of the game have taken, and uh, it got me to look at the game. I, I'm not really a fictional guy, uh, and even the introduction of a famous player here and there into the sets uh, it wasn't enough to get me to try it, but the pro version was. And I, I've got to say that I'm very impressed with what I've seen so far. I want to play more of it and see what's here. The starter set has the six teams that I mentioned before. Uh, they do not all have 25-man rosters. For some folks, that's going to be a problem. But the... I believe the Red Sox have 26. The 69 Mets, I think, have 22. Uh, and so they all kind of, all six teams kind of fall in somewhere in there. Um, so you don't get every player that played on these six teams. For some people, that might be a deal breaker. Uh, so I think you need to know that. Um, the... Expansion sets for the pro version have created a lot of good teams, a lot of famous teams, and a lot of interesting combinations. They're in uh, six team sets, and you can sort of pick what you want, and the, the, the combination that you want to try if you want to buy an expansion. But I really recommend, if you're going to go, if you want to try the pro version, you get the starter set, and kind of go from there and kind of learn it and see see what's what. I'm still thinking about what which expansion I might want to pick up uh, later on after I learn this a little bit uh, more completely. So the rosters range from 22 to 26. That might be a little bit of a deal breaker for some. The second thing that might be a little bit of a deal breaker for some is that these are great team sets. These are not full seasons. So if you need a full season to be interested in purchasing, this isn't it. Maybe you want to try the fictional set. That would have like a league set up for you. And you could go with that if you wanted to do that uh, instead. The other part to it that is I understand why they did it because you start with splits to decide which way you're going to go. Are you going to go to the batter matrix or to the pitcher matrix based on the split rating and the roll of 1D10? Uh, but then the matrix itself is an aggregate. So you're looking at all of the hits against lefty and righty hitters and all of the hits given up uh, for that pitcher against both kinds of batters. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is 
it might make sense if you're really looking for a genuine split experience it might make sense to have two matrices one versus left-handed pitching and one versus right-handed pitching that's not what they do i get why they do it i think splits are overdone so i'm good with it uh because i think sample sizes really distort what the splits end up being so i like for instance, this is Roger Moret. This is Roger Moret's matrix against both lefty and righty batters combined. I think that makes sense. But if someone's looking for a really split, split system, this starts that way and then moves to a combined matrix, that may be a sticking point for some folks. Um, Having said that, what do I like? Well, the games that I've played have been very uh, realistic. I've gotten, uh, I, I've been, I've played two games, so my sample size is beyond tiny. But I've enjoyed uh, figuring out what's where. I've picked it up pretty quickly. I don't like Sims where I've got to do all this work and triangulation to figure out what it is that happened on a play. And with On Deck Baseball Pro, you don't have to. It's pretty quick and dirty. Um, most of your plays are resolved in two roles. There's a few where you need to do a third. You're doing that first role to determine are you going batter card or pitcher mate, batter matrix or pitcher matrix. And then you're doing a second roll to see where you are on the matrix. And for the most part, that's your at bat. Now there are times when you've got to do some fielding checks or something like that, where you'll need a third roll. But for the most part, it's two rolls and your at bat is done. I like that too. Um, it feels like baseball and that's important. Uh, so I think this is worth I'm glad that I picked this up. The price for this was $55. So I got for my $55 the charts that I need. Um, I got the instructions and I got the six teams to get me going. These are oversized pages. I wanna say two of these make up an eight and a half by 11. Um, Something like that. The paper's a little bit thicker than typing paper. Uh, some people I've seen online put their uh, cards in protective sheets. Maybe that's something you'd be interested in doing too. Uh, but for now, I, these are thick enough for me where I'll be all right with how they are without doing that. So uh, that's On Deck Baseball Pro First Look. We'll go through a full game, not too long from now when I feel comfortable enough to actually put it on video. But I like what I'm seeing. I think it's worth a look as long as uh, you kind of keep in mind the uh, qualifiers that I mentioned before. Oh, the other thing I wanna say is I really like the pitcher stamina and fatigue system. You know, there's, a few things in baseball sims that I really think are difficult to do. One is range ratings. The second one is base running or speed, not stolen bases. Although stolen bases are tricky, you can develop a stolen base system, but a base running system is, is tricky. And the third one that I think is the third, like the, the, the trifecta of difficulty uh, range ratings, base running ratings, and pitcher fatigue. And I like the pitcher fatigue system in on deck baseball. Makes sense to me. Uh, it works. And if you pair it up with the use of the actual pitchers that I knew something, I, my first game I played the 79 Pirates and the 75 Reds. I know the pitcher, I knew, and I, the reason I picked those two teams, I know them both inside and out. And the fatigue system worked in my mind, picturing it 
uh, at work on the field. It just, it sort of makes sense. So I like that too. Wanted to mention that before I go. So it's On Deck Baseball Pro. I'm putting the link in the description for this video. Check that out. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if you have questions or if you have uh, an interest in me doing a full game. I guess if nobody has an interest, I won't be doing it. Uh, so let me know in the comments. I hope this has been helpful and I hope you have a wonderful evening. So long, everybody.